Do you ever wonder why in JavaScript you can only use await in an async function? There is a very important reason for this which I'll be helping you understand in this video. And you've probably also heard about top level await which works in the context of modules and I'll explain that later in this video why it's even possible. But first let's talk about why your await needs to be in an async function. Using await in an async function enforces a clear direction of your code. It's also helpful to create a distinction between what is synchronous code and what is asynchronous code. Let's take a look. So here I have an asynchronous function. This is just a sleep function. It allows me to delay for a particular time. But you can think of this as your API request or some other asynchronous request. And this takes two seconds by default to complete. Let's now say we have this async function called print some numbers. First we have start printing, print one, print two, and then let's say we have sleep. I'm going to remove the await for now. Then we have three, four, five. So what we expect to happen now is print one, print two, sleep, then print three, print four, and print five. In our slim function, we also have this console log done with async operation in script.js. So here now I can call print some numbers. If I go here and I refresh, you can see we have start printing one, two, three, four, five. Then I have the async operation done at the end. If I refresh this again, you can see I have one, two, three, four, five. Then after two seconds, this is shown at the end. So what happens is that the JavaScript engine runs this line, it's synchronous, run this line, it's synchronous. Now this particular line is asynchronous, so it takes you to the background to complete its asynchronous operation. Then the engine continues with this line, this line, and this line. And then when the asynchronous operation is completed, we now have this line logged. But if I put a wait here, what I'm now telling the JavaScript engine is that when you get to this line, I want you to wait for this line to be completed before you run the other lines. So if I come in and refresh, you see we have one, two, then the engine waits for that asynchronous operation. Then when it is done, we now have three, four, five. But this works in the context of an async function. But let's say after we call print some numbers, we have L6, L7, L8. By the way, if you missed it, L is just a variable that has console.log. So now let's say I have this. Uh, let me also put this as outside to indicate that this is outside the function. Now what is going to happen is that when the JavaScript engine sees this await side, it's going to pause this function, print some numbers, and it's going to run everything else outside the function, which means it's going to run this, this, and this. And then when this asynchronous operation is completed, the engine can now come back to this function and complete this side. Let's see that. So if I refresh, you see we have one, two, then the function is paused at this place where we have an asynchronous operation that takes some time, but we choose to wait for that asynchronous operation. Then JavaScript is able to continue with every other thing outside the function with this line, with this line, with this line. Then when the asynchronous operation is completed, the engine can now go back to the function to run these three lines. And so we have three, four, five here. So what we notice here is a non-blocking behavior where we are waiting for an asynchronous operation to be completed here, but instead of this function now stopping every other thing to run, JavaScript will continue with every other thing, your click events, things you want to add to the DOM, user interaction, every other thing that JavaScript needs to do on the page will continue. Only this function has been paused. And then when the asynchronous operation is completed, JavaScript can come back to this function and then continue from where it stopped. Now this is very important to understand because this is why the await only works in the async function. Now let's say we put an await here so that we wait for this line before any other thing runs. Now this is going to be bad. Why? Because now we are going to stop every other thing from running until this function is completed. If this function should take four seconds, five seconds, whatever the asynchronous operation might be, this is going to prevent every other thing from running. It's going to prevent this, 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 Basically, everything that comes after this line is going to be prevented from running. So your click event listener, things that add to the DOM, even the screen becomes unresponsive because the main thread is now blocked with this function that needs to be completed before these remaining things can run. And this is why you cannot use the await outside because you are pausing everything. But when you use the await in this async function, then you are indicating that only this function should be paused. Every other thing can run. And I can actually show you what would happen if we had something like this. So let's say down here, I have this 
loop. So this is a synchronous function that blocks the thread for a particular number of time, let's say two seconds. So let's say I have this block while loop here. Actually, let me make this three seconds. Hopefully my browser doesn't crash. Now this is synchronous, right? Now watch what is going to happen with this L outside six, seven, and eight. Well, first let me have L block the thread. Okay, if I come here and refresh, you see we have blocked the thread. The thread is now blocked for like three seconds, loop around for three seconds, perform these iterations before we have this. But there is something more that happens. It's not just blocking the thread and not allowing me to do this. Even the screen becomes responsive. So see here, I can select the text on the screen, right? Now watch what happens when the thread is blocked. If I try to select it, it doesn't work. The thread is blocked, so it's preventing user interactions. It's preventing everything that happens on that single thread that makes your application responsive. I cannot do anything on the screen until this while loop has been completed. And now I can come back to select, then my click events works, then my DOM and every other thing I'm doing works. So this is an example of what will happen if you have your await here. It will prevent every other thing in the thread from running. And by the way, this also happens even if you have an immediately invoked function expression. Let's just say we had an async function here, L stats immediately invoked function expression. So now if I run this, you see we have stats immediately invoked function expression. So because it's asynchronous and we have a pause here, JavaScript pauses the function and now we continue with other things like this, this, this. Then when the operation is completed, we now have this. Now note that this function pausing is only happening because we have this await here. We are waiting for the asynchronous operation. Let's say we weren't waiting for an asynchronous operation and we just had random here i'm going to comment this line you're going to see now that we have stats ify then we have the random before we continue with the outside so it's because we have this await here which is waiting for that synchronous operation to complete that's why this function is paused so even every other thing that comes after the function is paused until that asynchronous operation is completed but then like we saw you can use top level awaits within modules. And let me show you why that is even possible. So here I have module1.js and I still have my asynchronous sleep function here where I have module one, module one, module one, I print one, two, three, then we pause for the await, then we continue. So here I can use await outside an async function and I have module two where I'm not doing anything async. Then in my HTML, I have my script.js and then I can have the type of module to specify that this script should be imported as a module. Here I have my top level await, right? Now here's what's going to happen. I'm just going to comment all these things that I have here. Now we have module one and module two. If I refresh now and see what happens, we have a pause, then something runs here. So since we imported module one first, in module one, we have L module one, one, L module one, two, L module one, three, then L module one, pause for await. So you see, we have that here, module one, one, module one, two, module one, three, then module one, pause for await. But as we have this await here, instead of this blocking the main thread and not allowing us to do anything like user interaction or even running the other module, the JavaScript engine pauses this module and then continues with other things like module two. So now you see the next thing that comes in the line after this pause for await is we now have module two one, module two two, module two three, module two four, module two five. Everything in module two is run. And then when this async operation is now completed, the JavaScript engine can go back to module one and continue. So here we have done with async operation in module one then module one can now continue with module one four and module one five. So the top level await in modules is possible because going back to the HTML, JavaScript is able to pause that module without affecting other modules or other JavaScript code that you have or even blocking the main thread. If this wasn't a module, and we use this await here, if that were possible, that would mean that this script is going to prevent this from running and it's going to prevent every other user interaction or every other thing that happens on the main thread from running. But because we specify that this is a module, the top level await is now possible. So the engine can pause this module without blocking the thread, continue other things. When the asynchronous operation in this module is completed, the engine can come back and continue with 
the rest. So except in cases like models where you can have your top level await, in your normal JavaScript, you cannot have top level await so that it doesn't block the main thread. I hope this helped you understand JavaScript a bit more, helps you understand why JavaScript is called a non-blocking language, and ultimately helps you understand why you need to have your async function before you have your await inside. If you enjoy videos like this where I answer the whys to programming or to JavaScript, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and you can await for my next video.